There are basically three ways to shape full length feathers to mount onto arrows. One is to use scissors and simply cut them based off of a template. It's the cheapest startup option, but it does take a long time. Step up from that and you can buy a feather chopper. They work alright, but they aren't quite as versatile. For a single $30 or $40 chopper, you'll only get one cut, say a 4 inch right wing parabolic. If you want another style, you gotta get another chopper. And they do wear down over time. The third option, and the one that has the highest startup cost if bought new, is a feather burner. A new one will run you close to 150 bucks, but I'll show you how to make one on your own for much, much less. The advantage of a burner is that you can shape your burning wire to whatever template you want, and it's very fast to operate. Replacing the wire is also cheap and easy. I went on eBay and purchased an old model train transformer. It's a Lionel 35 watt version, model 1016, made in 1959 or 60, the other key component is the resistance wire. Unlike copper, resistance wire doesn't allow electricity to flow through it easily, so it heats up rather fast when you send a current through it. Now in theory, any wire material with a high resistivity value should work for this. But I've tried stainless steel in a few different diameters and also nichrome 80, and I found that the nichrome was overall easier to form and it turns red hot at a lower voltage than the stainless steel. The stuff I have is 24 gauge, which is about 20 thousandths in diameter. A whole spool is less than $6 on Amazon. If you do end up using steel, heat up the wire first before trying to form it. It'll relax the temper and make forming easier. The dimensions of the fixture aren't vitally important. Mine is just 1 by 5 by 12 inches on the base. I use tight bond to glue two blocks on each end of the platform, and then on one of the blocks I cut out a V-shaped wedge, with the backside being vertical. On the other side, I drilled a 3 16 inch through hole and also a 5 16 inch hole just deep enough to seat a carbon arrow shaft. Next, drill two half inch holes partially through the bottom of the base near the back edge. I made mine 6 inches apart. They need to be just deep enough to seat the head of a bolt. Then I drilled out the same partial holes the rest of the way with a quarter inch bit. For hardware, you'll need two 3 inch long quarter 20 fully threaded hex bolts, four quarter 20 wing nuts, two quarter inch brass washers, and four quarter 20 brass nuts. They totaled four dollars at Menards. Stick a three inch fully threaded hex bolt through each hole from the bottom and tighten them in place with a wing nut. Now you need to attach two brass nuts, a brass washer, and a wing nut to each bolt. I'm using brass because it conducts electricity well. Next, I took a cable from a two dollar extension cord, cut out a 12 inch section, and used wire strippers to expose a little bit of copper on each wire. Without too much effort, you can also use a razor blade or scissors to strip the insulation. Wrap the copper from one wire around a bolt and sandwich it between the two brass nuts. Do the same with the opposite wire. Then, with the power cord unplugged, sandwich the other ends of the two wires on the transformer terminals. Form a section of wire to match the template of the cut you want, a 4 inch shield cut in my case. The ends of the wires will need to be bent back and sandwiched between the upper nut and the washer on each bolt. Do some fine adjusting with the bare arrow shaft in place. To prepare the arrow, you need to first glue on uncut feathers. I've just taken these feathers, cut them to 4 inches, trimmed the quill and ground it on a belt sander with 50 grit paper before gluing with super glue and a vise. Slowly increase the voltage on the transformer. When the wire gets red hot, you're good to go. While you can keep increasing the voltage from there, it really isn't necessary. And actually, you don't need to get the wire to a visible red hot to cut the feathers. They'll cut a little bit cooler, but red hot seems to cut easier, and it's a good visual indicator that your transformer is working properly. Slowly spin the feathers through the wire. You might need to do a small amount of cleanup work afterwards with scissors. That's really all there is to it. Once you have the initial setup done, you can burn through a dozen arrows in no time at all. I've read of people using as small as 20 watt transformers successfully. These model train transformers are all over eBay. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding one that's between 10 and 15 dollars. Just try to make sure that it's been tested to work in the description and double check the power output. There are many with a power output of only 5 to 8 watts and I'm not sure that's enough. The transformers in general are pretty foolproof as they just shrink the high voltage from the wall to a lower voltage and you can adjust the dial to zero it in for your specific wire. It's the same technology that's used in the commercial feather burners. I've also seen guys use 6 volt car battery chargers. They output DC current instead, which will still heat up the wires just fine. These are a bit more hit or miss though, and here's why. 
If you have a 6 volt car charger plugged into the wall, it will output 6 volts on its terminals. The amount of current drawn would be determined by the resistance of the wire, which would vary based on length, thickness, and material. If the amount of current draw is too high, you'll damage the charger. Often it doesn't get to that point though because modern chargers will either limit the current output to say 1 or 2 amps, which may or may not be enough to heat up your wire, or it will try to communicate with the battery to read its voltage, in which case it won't work at all. Well, I really hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe.